see it? Oh, you found it already. Oh, yeah, that's it. What about that bolt? Is that one of yours? Uh, maybe. <laughs> you never know. Hey, guys. Good morning. Today on Vintage Speed Garage, we've got two projects going at once, simultaneously. It's going to be a busy day. We've got the 6.0 Ford here, the 05 6.0 is back, and it's back for uh, some work on the turbo. Uh, what we're suspecting the problem is uh, it's not making boost uh, unless the truck gets really hot, and what we're suspecting the problem is is the veins inside the turbine housing are sticking and not uh, opening and closing fully so that it can build boost properly. So uh, we're going to pull that turbo off. We've already got all the intake tubing off and the pressure line, the boost uh, charge pipe, removed. Uh, so we've got everything out of the way. We've just got to unbolt the turbo from the downpipe and from the pedestal that it mounts onto. And uh, we can pull the turbo out, get it on the bench here, tear it apart, and take a closer look at the turbine housing. Hopefully that's the problem. We'll pull all the veins out. We'll pull the um, rotating ring in there that moves the veins. We'll get all that stuff out of the way, get it all cleaned up in diesel fuel with the wire wheel, and... Uh, lube everything back up with some copper anti-seas and hopefully that will solve our problem for some period of time. This turbo has about 150,000 miles on it. Um, in a few years of use it gets used heavily so uh, we're hoping that just freshening up the veins and lubing everything up will solve the problem for another 100,000 miles. The other project that's going on this weekend is Kevin's Cam Swap, and I am late for that, so I'm going to take you guys down there so we can look at his big blue badass F350, which is a 460 powered gasser, and is getting a new Lenati cam and lifters today. So I need to go down there right now, set up some cameras so we can see what Kevin's getting into, uh, and when my brother gets here, we'll start tearing into the 6.0, and I'll be running back and forth trying to get video of everything, so stay tuned, should be interesting. So Kevin's just about got the intake manifold off, uh, got both valve covers off, got the upper intake off, he's disconnecting all the fuel lines and the uh, injector rails. Pulling the uh, manifold with all the injectors in place is the plan. Um, it's taking a little while to get to this here, get to this point, he's been working on it all morning. Uh, you can see this is the, the bolt that retains the gear on the front of the camshaft, so that Camera camshaft retainer has already been removed, so once the intake can come off and the lifters can come out, then he can uh, pull this camshaft straight out. So Kevin may not agree, but he's really on the downslope here. Once that cam's out, the new cam can go back in, and uh, reassembly can begin. So it's about halfway there. Pair up. All right. So you already, uh, there's still a lifter in there. Did you drop the new ones in? Uh-uh, there's no lifter in there. Is it? Under that rack. Oh, I this one. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a stuck one. Ah. Uh. Yeah, good thing you're here. <laughs> well, I guess I probably would have figured it out, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So there was two that were hard to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so now you just got to scrape all the uh, yep. crud off everything. Yep. And Vacuum out the valley here and then get the slide hammer out. Yeah.
So is the pressure from having potentially tens of people watch your video as you install this cam, is that wearing on you? Just trying to not look like an idiot. <laughs> I got Oh yeah, look at that. Slammer home cap. There it is! Yeah. There it is! That's how you do that. She's home. Nice. I'm free. Ford 460, now with more uh. horsepower. We'll I'm not gonna hold my breath. Unless you believe the specs I read on the internet, because it said it had like something like 467 lift factory. Well that would suck. <laughs> I'm guessing they, they may be wrong on that uh, well, form I just read. <laughs> I guess. I think it's more the duration that's going to... No, no. I, I think that was completely false. So I hope so, because that would be mildly disappointing. No. You can tell by looking at them side by side, there's more lift going yeah, on. Yeah, well, no, I measured it. So. I mean, there's definitely <laughs> more lift. I'm guessing that maybe it's like 437 or 427 or... I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm, keep go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with 390 because it makes me feel better. 390. Oh yeah. All right. And these are uh, full hydraulic flat tappet lifters. Flat tappet cam. Yes. Non roller. Non roller. I thought about doing the roller upgrade, but you gotta do new rock arms and all sorts of wild shit. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have to set your. Uh, adjust your rockers when you put everything back together right no these are fixed so you just torque them down to 20 foot pounds and, and that's it day. okay so what's going to be next then bigger injectors or Shh. <laughs> not with this obd1 computer uh, it's untunable oh uh, yeah and i think next we'll just yank this out and put a cummins in it <laughs> <laughs> cool so what's your next step here going to be? You're going to put the intake on, or the the rocker arms and push rods, uh, or rocker arms and push rods, so I can make sure the push rods are seated in the lifters. Get okay. those bolted back down, back down my torque wrench. All right. Um, I should probably put the cam retainer plate on there. Probably. Right now, while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so button up the cam chain and the the front end of the motor and all that stuff, and then drop the intake on and yep. close it all up. Okay. All up and make it sound so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Cables, but I don't have uh, anything to jump off of. Uh, I got the white car right there. So with the dead battery in Kevin's truck, at this point we brought up the uh, 6.0 diesel jump starter. Part of doing the cam swap? Uh, apparently getting the timing correct. <laughs> uh, difficult, most difficult part is just getting it all taken apart, really. Yeah, I think the most difficult part is just getting to it because there's you've got to take everything and the water pump on the Boards use 118 volts right. that go through every single accessory on the front drive, so everything's <laughs> got to come off. And then all the you know, old plastic clips and stuff like that, I think, is the you know, another just the disconnecting tank, just everything and yeah. vacuum lines, all the smog stuff, which of course the one of the EGR tubes fought me. Oh yeah, yeah. Like 20 minutes this morning. All that stuff went back together good. The EGR. Yeah, everything. Everything came apart. So again, I seized it from the headers. 
So now we're on the way back to find Kevin's antenna. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Run this oil. This is your second oil change. Dump right. the break-in oil. Yes. Now we're the break-in oil. This is uh, regular conventional 10W30 uh, with top cams, uh, zinc additive in it. Uh, run this one for about 500 miles dump it and again. then dump it again and then change it uh, back to another uh, another bottle of zinc additive or buy uh, Amsoil will make some stuff that has it already in it that's supposed to be. So yeah, successful mission this weekend. Yes. Got two Fords taken care of this weekend. Got the 6.0 running good again and Kevin's 460 running great. guys, it's been a good weekend for Ford projects here at the Vintage Speed Garage and at uh, Kevin's home shop there. Uh, the 6.0 project that we worked on, I didn't get any video of that. Um, my brother and I were just busting knuckles trying to get the project done. We pulled the turbo out, uh, went through the whole vane system. It's a ver VGT, Variable Geometry Turbo, which has moving vanes inside the turbine housing. Took it apart, cleaned everything up with a wire wheel, got all the soot and corrosion and just uh, rust and whatnot that had built up on those pivot surfaces where the veins sit. Cleaned all that up, used a little bit of copper anti-seize on all of the pivot points so that the veins could function normally. Put it all back together, got the turbo back in, reinstalled, took it for a drive, still no boost. So... <laughs> At first we were very concerned, you know, we thought, geez, we spent all this time, didn't make the situation any better. We checked the EBP, which is the exhaust back pressure sensor, we checked the MAP sensor, uh, we checked, uh, even checked the IAT in the, MN, in the MAF sensor. We pulled the VGT solenoid out, did a resistance test on it, and it was within uh, a, a couple decimal points of the specification, so it was close. We soaked the VGT in some diesel fuel, we pulled it out, connected it to 12 volt power and, and operated it a, a few different times with it off of the turbo. It seemed to be functioning normally, uh, cleaned it up real good, stuck it back in the turbo, and wouldn't you know that was the problem. Everything started working fine again. So my brother now knows that the problem uh, with this turbo is the VGT solenoid itself. Uh, they're about a hundred bucks, so he's going to order a new VGT solenoid just to have as a spare. And whenever this one finally craps out and stops working altogether, he'll swap out the VGT solenoid and should be good for another, you know, who knows, five, ten, twenty thousand miles on that turbo. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us for this weekend. It was been a long weekend. We put in a, we both put in a lot of hours. Kevin worked on his truck starting Friday night. He started tearing into it, and uh, we just finished here Sunday afternoon. Uh, I spent the, the better part of Saturday working on uh, the 6.0 here in a little bit this morning and we were able to get everything wrapped up, resolved, both trucks are running great and uh, you know that's the, that's the outcome we we're all hoping for so uh, it's nice when that happens, it doesn't always work that way but you just can't you know give up. We On Kevin's truck after the first startup a little timing adjustment, a little idle speed adjustment after break in and everything's uh, doing really good you know uh, a camshaft changes all those factors you know you when you when you pull your cam out your timing of course your distributor you have to pull that out of the intake manifold and uh, you're gonna have to reset your timing and um, just just the camshaft alone will affect your your timing slightly so that's important and it also is going to change especially in a fuel injected vehicle your idle speed you know a little bit more aggressive cam profile is going to require a little bit more idle to bring up the speed uh, idle speed back up where where you like it so small little adjustments little tweaks here and there but in the end um, that camshaft made a big improvement on the 460 Kevin's excited to tow with it and see how that improves his towing 
And you know what? Uh, after writing in it before the headers, and now after the headers in the cam, I'm not sure that the 7.3 has anything for it anymore. That, that 460 is running really good, even with the big 37s on there. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us. Thank you for watching. Give us a like if you think the video is halfway decent or you just like 460s with camshafts in them. And if you're new, please subscribe. We've got lots more OBS content coming. We've got lots more work probably on that 6.0. I'm going to be tearing back into the Mustang today or this week. And uh, we've got a ton of work planned on Parker's 71 bump side project. So stay tuned.